Hi everybody, it's Claire with another art journal video. Uh, today I'm working in my Square Dilutions journal and I'm going to be using um, a stamp set by Danielle Mack which is called Rise Above. Um, it's got a fabulous uh, face stamp on it and it's really great for a starting point for a page. So I'm just adding some paint onto the page and I'm starting off with Carnation from Dina Wakely Media and then I'm using um, Heather so I'm using some of the pastel colours and then at the end I just add a bit of mineral as well. These colours work really nicely together they're great for starting off with a fairly neutral background, fairly pale, not too in your face, which is something that was unusual for me because you know that I like really bright colours. <laughs> so next I'm adding some stenciling. This is another of my absolute favourite stencils. It's great for just getting some blocks of colour and stenciling onto the background, which you can then work with and add some more interest to. So I'm stenciling using again the same one of the same colours. I've already used this as the Heather and um, that stencil is from Dina Wakely as well. This is one of Dina's uh, stencils. Again, it's the Alphabet stencil. It's the stencil and mask set. Um, and I'm just adding some of this using the carnation. Just so keeping it all really subtle in the background because I knew that I wanted the face that I was going to stamp to be the main focal point. So that's the stencil that you've just seen there called Mini Favourites. That's also from Dina Wakely Media. So this is the stamp from Danielle Mack called Rise Above. And um, as you can see, it's got that fabulous moth uh, stamp on it as well, which is one of my absolute favourites. Um, I love it. So I'm just stamping it out onto some um, cardstock. It's just ordinary cardstock. It's not particularly thick. And then I'm just adding some shading onto the face just to give me a starting point really for where I'm going to be adding some colour and you can see I'm going to be using watercolours. Um, watercolour isn't a medium that I'm particularly confident with so this was really kind of like a practice for me and um, where better to do it than in your art journal where it doesn't really matter. So um, what you're going to be seeing is me practicing. So I'm starting off with a skin tone um, and I'm just going to see that I'm going to be kind of layering it up as I go along. So I keep blotting it with this piece of kitchen roll, just lifting some off where there's too much. And then once that was dry, I then go in and I add a bit more of a darker layer where I wanted the shading to be darker. And I just keep building it up like that really. And now when I look at it, I can see places where I've made mistakes and it's not quite right. But this is how we learn. We just, you know, learn by practice. And how do we get better? By practicing and practicing and practicing. So I guess, you know, this is OK. You're watching me practicing. <laughs> I quite like the painterly look as well. So I'm not particularly worried about the fact that you can see some of the paint strokes and things. I don't think it really matters. Um, it's a look that I quite like. So I think don't be afraid to just give it a try. I think the one area looking at it now where it didn't quite go right is the cheeks, but you know, it's okay, it doesn't matter, does it? So then I'm just adding some colour into the eyes. This is where it starts to come to life, when you start to get some colour on the eyes and the lips. And that catch light in the eye as well makes all the difference. So now it's time to put some colour on the lips. This uh, paint palette that I'm using, it's a watercolour set and it's a mixture of Windsor & Newton and Prima watercolours. Um, I've kind of shoved them all together, my favourite ones, um, mostly for when I go away, which of course with Covid we haven't done much of that recently. <laughs> so um, it just means it's quite a handy little set to have with me when we are travelling. So I'm just fussy cutting this out as best I can. 
and then I'm just measuring up sort of where the hair is going to go. And then decided that it didn't look quite right. You just know, don't you, sometimes when you're drawing where it just doesn't look right. So I went for a bigger, a bigger hairstyle, a more dramatic hairstyle. And I'm just using the Stibolo all and just adding some more shading onto the face. And then some double-sided tape and some glue stick just to stick this in because it is cardstock, it is a little bit thicker. Uh, I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to come off the page. So then just sticking her in place and then I'm starting to work on the hair. So I am using um, acrylic paint for the hair um, and just the reason I've gone for that is because it is a little bit more opaque than the watercolour and I can sort of layer it up. The colour that I've started with first is you can see it's a little bit metallic um, and it was a little bit of sterling I think and then I'm just going in with a slightly darker and just adding an idea of some curls onto there. So these are the moths and I'm going to use three because odd numbers work well and um, I'm going to be colouring these in using to start off with some watercolour paint again. I love the detail on these stamps, they're so pretty, there's so many, just so many things you could do with them. So I'm doing them all the same so that they kind of work well together on the page. And once I've got my layer of colour on, I'm then going to use some watercolour pencils by Fab from Faber-Castell and just going to add some more detail onto those just to make them have a bit more depth. I sped this bit up quite a bit because otherwise it's a little bit boring watching someone colouring the same thing three times over. So um, you can see I'm just adding some more depth onto one side of the bits of the butterfly slash moth. Um, I'm pretty sure. I think it is a moth, but I'm not sure. So then again, I'm just sticking them in using glue stick. And um, then once they're stuck in place, you can see I was just bending that into the uh, fold of the page and just adding in their antennae. And I'm just using this black pen and just adding some more of those curls onto the hair that were actually part of the initial stamp that had disappeared underneath all the paint. And then just using a white gel pen and adding some white highlights back onto the moths. So some splatters using Dina Wakely gloss paint in Fuchsia. And then this is a stamp set from um, Darkroom Door. Another one of my favourites, um, I think it's called Scribbled Alphabet. Um, but if you have a look on Darkroom Door, if you like, it is easy to find. Um, it's a very, very easily recognisable stamp set. So I just stamped those onto some collage tissue paper and I'm gluing those in place using some gel medium. Just simple words, keeping it bold because I wanted the star of the page to be the face. And there we go, there's the finished page. So watching me practice with watercolours, a little bit scary, but you know, give it a go, give it a try. It's, um, it's worth having a practice. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.